Today I fucked up by also not realizing I had athlete's foot for 20 years. I, 35F, saw a post on Today I fucked up a few weeks ago. About someone who had thick, calloused, crusty, mother chuffing feet. And they had tried all sorts of pumice stones, metal graters etc. and always envied other people their soft pink feet. They discovered they had a fungal infection and their feet got better after treating it. Ha. Huh. I thought on reading about these unmanicurable hooves of my fellow Redditor. Since I've been a teenager, I too have been cursed with thick hardened soles, with cracked heels. I don't have the gnarled yellowing talons this fellow describes, but I've tried every cheese grater, acid-lined socks, seriously, intense moisturizing regimens but I've not had a soft foot since I was a child. I always thought athlete's foot was itchy red scales underscore around the toes underscore not the thick cratered calluses I'd always had. The part that really got me thinking was when Opt mused that their cracked skin went up the sides of the feet. Shit. Mine does that too. Maybe. And yes fellow Redditors. I too have been harboring an ungodly fungal foot infection for 20 years. After 7 days of using an over-the-counter anti-fungal cream my feet are already softer and more like that of an elf rather than a hobbit. Maybe one day I can slip my feet into bed without a crusty edged trotter catching on the sheets. Too long did not read. Dot. Lived with crusty feet my whole adult life for no goddamn reason. Edit. The foot cream I'm using is Caniston. Cotrimazole. See you on the beach my soon-to-be soft-footed friends. I'm pissed to admit this may be the Reddit thread I needed today. I'm entering the danger zone my dudes and forwarding this to my wife. Wish me luck. Got itchy feet around 35 years old. Gym locker room? IDK. I was always careful. Doctor had me using Econazole cream daily. Helped but definitely no cure. Gotta put this cream on my feet every day rest of my life? Made appointment with a specialist. This idiot doesn't seem to hear how bad this bothers me. Tells me to go to the store. Get certain dry roll on antiperspirant. Use on feet once or twice a day. I can't recall. And that should fix it. Absolute waste of time and copay. In a few days it became apparent that the specialist was not an idiot. For those relating to this on a spiritual, and literal, level, if no fungus is found, psoriasis is another possible explanation. Source. My own nasty feet. I thought I had athlete's foot for a couple of years. Always embarrassed to have my socks off in front of people. Tried all the remedies. In for a physical and my doc asked why I didn't remove the socks and he took a look. Turns out I just had really bad eczema. He prescribed a cream and it was gone within days, after two years. Felt like such an idiot. Today I fucked up by finding out what my 8-year-old son was saving for. Before we start this, I wanna tell everyone this is a happy TIFU. When I was a 16-year-old, I was stupid, I didn't wear protection and I got a girl pregnant. I was shocked, I never expected having a kid that early and I don't know if I regret it or not. Almost all of my regrets washed away when my son was born. For privacy purposes we will call him Rory. I am 24 now and my son is 7 almost 8 now. He is the smartest and most loving kid I could ever ask for. His mom had left when he was around 2. When I tried to sue for child support the judge sided with her quoting that I was the father and needed to step up. Ever since then it has been me and Rory against the world. I was a single dad to Rory from then on. I had a few girlfriends but nothing serious. I left my parents' place and got a small apartment. I dropped out of high school which I still immensely regret, but hey, life happens. During this time, my neighbors, God bless them, helped me raise my son. They were an older couple next door whose kids had moved out long before, so they were fine babysitting him after school, late shifts etc. I am a manager at McDonald's. I make lousy money but it was enough to get by. Then two years prior our shitty building manager raised the rent for everyone and I had to work even harder for a place to live during a pandemic. My parents had left the state and I wasn't ready to uplift my kid's entire life because his dad couldn't provide for him. Every birthday, since before he was three I believe, I took Rory to Golden Coral usually on his birthday but there were more occasions we went, it was really good for him and he really enjoyed it. I haven't been able to take him for the past two years due to money being very tight. This is important for later. Sometimes I will get tipped at McDonald's, a quarter here, a dime here, a dollar here and there. I'll bring it him every day and give it to Rory to save. Well two days ago, Rory brings me his money jug and dumps it all out in front of me. He was so excited and began counting it out. 
There was around forty dollars there and he jumped up excitedly. I had asked him what's up little buddy. When I tell you guys my heart broke, my son asked me if it was enough to go to the corral for his birthday. A piece of me shattered inside, I didn't think he remembered the golden corral. I told him we couldn't go to the bank tomorrow and exchange it for cash. That night I ugly cried in my bedroom. I felt like a failure because I couldn't give him everything he's ever wanted. I began researching furthering my education. Well yesterday as soon as the bank opened, I took my son and we exchanged the money for cash. I then drove us to Golden Corral and we were there for two hours. My kid was so happy, and I was stupid because I just assumed he forgot this place. We get the all-you-can-eat buffet for two for thirty dollars, today I cried again in my room. I've never been good at saving money, but his birthday is next month and I am gonna do my best to take him every few months. So other parents have read it, can I ask some advice of how you deal with the guilt of having to say no? Again this is a happy tifu. Edit 1. Also if anyone asks, I'll post a pic of the coins and the container they were in. He saved them in a cotton candy container from a Christmas ago tears of joy. Edit 2. Kids money jug and his coins posted on my profile lol. That's for those who asked. I would post a pic of him blurred but that's violating his privacy. Edit 3. OMG thanks for the gold. This is my first across my two account star crown. Edit 4 to 3 gold. Wow now I wish I would have posted this on my main lol. Edit 5. Turning off DMS and replies because I'm getting a lot of trolls. Hope everyone has a great day. Thank you so much for your parenting advice heart. Edit 6 to 6 gold 2 platinum omfg thank you. I will be giving awards to top comments heart. Edit 7 to 9 gold and 4 platinum this is insane. Too long did not read. Kid saved for months just to treat us to Golden Corral because I couldn't afford to take him in two years, I ugly cried thinking he didn't remember. Hey there, your heart shouldn't break because you couldn't afford Golden Corral. Your heart should burst with pride that you taught your kid how to save for something important, how to value pennies as well as dollars, and that things worth doing are the things that involve making more memories with someone who loves him. My daughter's first Christmas, she got wipes and diapers wrapped up in newspaper. Now we have enough for everything all the kids need plus some of the things they want. Often I still have to say no. It's part of life, learning to live within your means. Days will come when things won't be as tight. Looks to me like you're doing a great job and that you are wealthy beyond belief in every way that really matters. Oh my god, my heart. Your son has already learned a really valuable lesson about saving for the things that he wants. If you can think of a way to tell him, while you have it under control, be sure to stress that he doesn't have to worry on your behalf, that the world has made money tight for you guys. You can absolutely turn this into a lesson and character building for your son. The best skill to learn before you become an adult is money management. In the news yesterday here there was a story about a child that died because of negligence from the parents and the story was heartbreaking. Today I read your today I fucked up and it's the opposite feeling. It would be great if all kids had a dad like you. I wish you the best for your family. Look for a legal aid clinic, there may be one near you. You need to go back to the family court and get the child support you're entitled to. The judgment previously violated your and your son's rights. It isn't about you, stepping up, it's about both parents supporting the child to the best of their abilities. Can I just say you sound like a wonderful dad, and it's disgraceful you weren't granted child support? I grew up poor and although there were places I wanted to go, I understood that we just couldn't afford it. I still had an enjoyable childhood because my mum was supportive and loving. Up until I was an adult but that's a different matter. Just keep loving your son and doing what you can, he honestly sounds like a great kid. Today I fucked up being intimate with a medium. Throw away. Last night I, 28 male, managed to convince an attractive girl, 25, to come home with me. It was the end result of a successful first date. Well, successful-ish. As soon as the two of us were naked in bed, she froze and asked if I lost a loved one recently. That question caught me off guard because my face was buried between her legs at the time. I didn't answer at first, but she asked again. The second time she literally made me stop eating her out so I could respond. For the record, she did mention that she had a sixth sense when we were getting to know each other, but we never discussed it in detail. To answer her question, I said my grandma passed away not so long ago. My date nodded her head and said she sensed my grandma's presence. I said I didn't believe in ghosts and continued eating her out. 
My date said my grandma had a message for me. At that moment, I was doing everything I could in the pussy eating department to distract my date from talking about my dead grandmother, but sadly, my oral sex game did nothing to prevent her from telling me that grandma wanted me to forgive my brother. I stopped what I was doing and asked my date what she meant. A few years ago, my brother hooked up with my girlfriend, now ex. I hated him afterwards and our relationship basically became non-existent. I never shared that information with anyone, let alone with a girl I just met, but somehow she knew. When I asked my date how she knew that, she said my grandma. She knew my grandma's name, which was another detail I never shared. As my skepticism began to fade, I asked my date if my grandma could actually see what we were doing. She said yes. My penis automatically disabled its erection function and shrunk in shame. My dick has been soft ever since. Sex was no longer possible for me when I imagined ghost granny not only watching me during sex, but also feeding my partner sensitive information about me from beyond the grave. I didn't sleep at all. My first proper date of the year and I get fucking haunted during sex. TL. Doctor hooked up with a girl who can communicate with the dead apparently. She ended up, making contact, with my late grandma while the two of us were being intimate and made me aware that ghost granny could see what we were doing. I was unable to get it up or go to sleep after that. She was actually paid by your brother to match up with you and get you to forgive him. I said I didn't believe in ghosts and continued eating her out. This has got to be in the top 10 Reddit sentences for 2023. Sounds like you missed out on a threesome. I guess your eating out game wasn't great. Not saying it was bad, either, but maybe it was kinda. Medium. Sounds like she social media stalked you bud. And made vague ass statements to get you to believe her. Today I fucked up by proposing to my girlfriend in the wrong language. So last night, I planned a romantic evening with my girlfriend and decided to pop the question. I had been practicing my proposal speech for weeks, and I was ready to make it perfect. I got down on one knee, took a deep breath, and began my speech. Or at least, that was the plan. What actually happened was that I got so nervous that instead of speaking in my native language, I proposed in the language I learned in high school, which is not my girlfriend's first language. To make matters worse, I mixed up the conjugation of verbs and ended up saying, will you be my husband? Instead of, will you be my wife? My girlfriend was shocked and started laughing, but I was so embarrassed that I couldn't even get up off the floor. It took her a while to compose herself, and she finally said yes, but the entire evening was filled with laughter and disbelief at my mistake. Too long did not read. Always double check what language you're speaking in before proposing to your significant other. It could save you from an embarrassing and hilarious today I fucked up lol. Honey, she said yes so you didn't fuck up. At least, she'll remember it. The last thing my girlfriend said before I was about to propose was, you're not going to do something stupid like propose, are you? To which I replied, yes, and proceeded to propose. Going on our 10 years soon. Being so nervous you couldn't speak in your native tongue and instead spoke in a language that she doesn't speak, but still managed to say the wrong thing is the cutest goddamn proposal story I've ever heard. Oh, come on. That's an adorable fuck up, and will be such a cute story. Gif. Giffy, 14 or my VFX he comes. Don't feel too bad. My husband proposed to me at the botanical gardens. Beautiful flowers, baby ducks, ponds the works. He popped the question under the bridge away from all the beauty. It was more of a creepy setting versus 10 feet away in either direction was beautiful. We've been married for 6 years now. Never been better. We also honeymooned at a haunted house. So the creepy bridge kinda fits.